Yeah, this is something that came from an organisation called eSkills UK, which is kind of supported by uh, the British Computer Society, and it was acti actively developed in conjunction with SAS. And a big report, uh, an interesting report they put out last year in November about what sort of skills data analysts, big data analysts, actually need to be involved with. <coughs> and they came up with these two sets of things, skills that you guys are going to need to be really good at to become effective as in the future. Now, this lot is specific to the sort of data and analytics side of things. This bit is very, very broadly applicable to almost everything you do with life. But these are the things here, the soft skills, which most of the time businesses find they're, they, they're new, under, new graduates are coming in as new employees and many, many, many of their existing staff are actually not very good at. Um, and the things that we thought we were trying to teach as a, in UK, UK type of degree programs, we thought we were teaching you know, things like problem solving and creativity. And yet, it's not very often that people appear to come out of university with that. And I think, personally, it's because of the way we have traditionally taught in the past. And that's why things that I'm trying to try, very different things, that some other people around the world and other universities, and many people here are actually beginning to do as well. We assume, I mean, businesses assume that when they recruit you, you've got those technical skills. So that's why we had the CBT tests, um, those four, Ten questions about SAS to prove to us, to prove to yourself, to prove to employers that yeah, you've mastered the relevant technical skills at a first year level. But here we're looking at all of those other things that make you really important and valuable if you can really get to grips with them. Now, problem identification: how I set you the task, go find an interesting set of data and find out what's an interesting question in that data. So you're not just doing problem solving, but you're actually going one step further, identifying the problem, not waiting for someone to tell you what the problem is, but you're actually capable of identifying it. Then obviously, understanding how to solve the problem, as one or two of you guys are saying, yeah, it's what Wayne's doing. He says, have you tried? Not here is the answer, but have you tried this or that or in, uh, in databases? Have you tried? Not here is the answer. If I give you the answer, you stop learning. Um, creativity. Thinking about coming up with interesting, different and new ways of doing things. And not thinking about the, sort, the recipe approach to solving a problem, but being able to solve a problem by thinking carefully and logically about it. Then they want people to be able to work together. That's why last semester you were working in li together a little bit in your pairs to help work, understand what working together means. And you're doing a lot of that now in group projects with Clive. <coughs> and because when you get out into the big wide world, you'll see that next year in your placement, most of you, yeah, you will be working in teams. And then we've got as I mentioned curiosity, yeah. How often do you stop and think, oh, I'm, I've never noticed this before. You know, just outside um, the atrium, where the old, where we used to be able to see those big white boxes, which are air conditioners or something, they've now put kind of some sort of interesting fence around it. How many of you actually thought, well, go and find out what it's about, what, how they've done it, what it is? How many of you are that curious? You just wander over to find out, oh, is Ivy there going and making an Ivy screen? Which is something that's never happened. I've never seen that before. Deliberately growing Ivy to screen things away. And there's a company called Hedera, or something or other, which is basically is a Latin name for Ivy. And yeah, the thing is to become really, really inquisitive and curious about everything that's out there. And that's what businesses are really looking for, particularly in the world of analytics. Because we don't necessarily know what the problem is or what the insight is that's in that mass of data. And you guys, if you do become business analytics experts, 
you are going to be given a lot of data, access to huge amounts of data, and many of the times they'll say, tell us what we can learn from this, how we can learn to make better decisions. The boss won't understand what it can do, won't understand um, the power of what's available now. And they will be relying on you to have this level of curiosity, you just go and find something interesting in that great heap of data. And when you come back in your third year, and do um, emerging IT product development, you're going to be given a project which essentially says, go find some interesting data. It might be from the Internet of Things, some sensor networks, if you can find one that will feed to you, and use this package of software from IBM, the Bluemix package, um, and there's many different areas. Or you'll, you might decide to go and find a bigger data set. It may be a set of Twitter feeds, it might be, who knows? All sorts of data that goes into another set of IBM Bluemix, the Watson set of data uh, products. And so it's very much about being curious about what's out there and finding it. And then the final, well, the final two parts kind of link together. The skills of communication, <coughs> which is what you kind of did with your little presentation about your project that you'd done last year. And you'll be getting more of that um, as we go through. And you'll see that with when you make your sales pitches to your uh, the people who you're doing your group project for, for example. You're learning to communicate in ways that connect with them. They do not need to connect with your technical understanding. You have to connect with their business understanding. And then, to wrap it all up, and this is a surprise me on, which day was it? Yesterday morning, if today's Thursday. No, it's um, Wednesday morning. Um, by accident, uh, someone who was at the meeting on Monday actually sat in the row in front of me, in a chair literally in front of me. And we got all the complaint together. She was from IBM and was running a really interesting environmental facilities down in London. And we got talking about this. And I was describing to her what was going on in the soft skills that eSkills UK had come up with. And when I mentioned the word storytelling as part of the soft skills we're trying to develop with you, it was like this huge, big, flashing bulb had suddenly lit up. It was almost as a, yay, wow, you're teaching storytelling. You're getting your students to do storytelling. And that, and that had happened several times um, while I was in that, uh, that conference over in the States. When I talked to business people about where we were going and talked about, that was the word, little phrase that seemed to connect with them more than anything about what soft skills you need to be developing that we're going to help you with. And that's why I was asking in this little sort of round table session earlier about how you found last uh, term's uh, intro to SAS as a way of learning rather than just being taught step by step and here are a few exercises you ought to do and saying, you know, you're going to have to learn things by yourself in the future. Let's get it out of the way in the first semester, or well, in your second semester of your first year, where difficulty is actually not a problem because it's not counting towards your degree. But you're learning very, very valuable skills that help you to learn the relevant bits of the hard skills when you need to in a specific context. Because you've got a problem to solve, you know it's somewhere in SAS. So you then say, oh, I can find it like that. And you'll be doing that for all time. So that's the background to you know, why we do it. I'm doing what, what I'm doing, why Clive is doing what he's doing, and Dave and Tommy and the others are all doing what they're doing in not giving you the answer and trying to drive as much as possible into the, the soft skills, the skills for life. So just I thought it would be interesting to have a little bit of a background into what's going on, why it's going on, so you understand how this is going to help you in the future. Okay, I'll switch it off now.